Hi, come on in. My name is Dr. Glenn Cummins, and I'm director of our Center for Communication Research. And I want to give you a real quick virtual walkthrough of our research labs, just to show you some of the different technology and show you the research capacity we have here in our center. So uh, this first room I want to take you into is one of several individual testing rooms we have. Right now we have this set up for eye tracking. If you're not familiar with eye tracking, what that involves is the continuous measurement of exactly where someone is looking on screen. So we can tell exactly what they're paying attention to when they're looking at a website, a picture, a video, anything like that. Right Right now this study is being set up so that someone comes in and does an eye tracking task on this computer, then they're actually going to shift and we also will track attention while they use a tablet. So we can study attention to screens of any size, big or small. Uh, and again, we have several rooms that are set up like this. This would be where the participant would come in and sit and take part in the study. While they're doing the study, typically a researcher would sit in a room like this, which is one of our control rooms. In this control room, we'd sit, we'd monitor what happens. Sometimes we can, uh, again, keep a tabs on things, take notes along the way. Uh, but this is where, again, we can sit and give them a private environment where they can do their testing while we still monitor what's happening. So again, we have several testing rooms like this. These two are both set up for eye tracking right now. Uh, we also have some glasses that are built for eye tracking so we can go out and measure attention in the field, at a, in a grocery store, maybe in someone's living room. Back here, we have very similar rooms. These are set up right now for psychophysiology. We measure biometric response to what people are seeing. So in this type of study, someone would come in and sit down. We'd prep their skin. We'd apply sensors so that we can measure their heart rate, their skin conductance, their respiration. Again, all these are indicators of someone's cognitive and emotional processing of what they're seeing. So they would take part in the study in that chair. Again, we have a screen here where we can monitor uh, uh, what they're seeing. Next door is the central control room where the researcher sits, and just like in the other labs we looked at a minute ago, this is where the researcher would sit. We can keep track of these different biometric readings along the way, take notes of what's happening, but it can give them a private space where they can watch and take part in the study without any type of interruption from the researcher. Another space I want to show you really quickly is our in-home simulation. Sometimes we call it our living room lab, but the idea is it's a controlled space, but it's still a very natural space for watching media content. And we do a lot of different types and studies in here. Right now, this one is set up for a virtual reality study that one of our uh, faculty is about to do. You can see the gaming chair with the VR headset where someone will come in and take part in a study. Uh, but we've also done uh, studies where families come in and watch content together. Sometimes we will measure those biometric responses to several people at once in this type of space. We've also done just uh, interview work in here where people come in and it's a quiet space, a comfortable space to do that type of communication research. We've also got cameras and microphones in the ceilings. So we can watch from next door and see exactly what's happening in this type of space. So let me show you that room next door real quick. So this is where we can monitor the living room we were in just a second ago. You can see it up there on the screen. We can record that for analysis after the fact. This is also the central observation room for our focus group space on the other side of this one-way mirror. We do a lot of different types of focus group projects, both faculty, student research, as well as class projects and partners across the country and the community. Um, so we can record all that from the central observation space. We also are able to watch another lab that I'm going to take you to in just a second that is our dial testing space. So this is our dial testing or continuous response measurement lab. In this space, participants will come in in a large group, typically watch some type of video recording. It might be a commercial, maybe a political debate, maybe some entertainment content. And instead of evaluating that message after the fact, what they do is they use a handheld dial like this one. They'll continuously turn it while they're watching so they indicate whether they like or dislike, whether they find a message credible or not credible. That way we can pinpoint not just how someone feels after the fact, but how they feel about that message all throughout the viewing experience. I've got one more lab I want to take you to, so let's go check that out real quick. In this last lab I want to show you, this space is really built for private individual testing of any type of message. So in this space we have participants come in and sit at individual workstations, put on a pair of headphones, and then we have software on all these computers that can present different messages, ask different questions. But the idea is that we can run a lot of different research participants through this space. The benefit of this type of space is the controlled environment for testing, but also the large capacity that we have. I hope you enjoyed this quick walk through our research labs in the Center for Communication Research. I invite you to click on the link below to see all our different faculty who truly are using these world-class research labs to do world-changing research.